brevity. There's something to be said for it. But oftentimes those things are long-winded and unnecessary, a cacophony of words that mean nothing even when you speak them. But brevity in terms of a card game, in terms of a take that card game, is almost a necessity. Uh, for instance, Munchkin was a game that brought me into the hobby, one that I, I very much enjoyed at first. But now I can find that same satisfaction from a game very similar to Munchkin in a fraction of the time. And the reason I'm not being very brevito, brev, uh, the reason I'm not being brevit, is there a word that goes for brevitos? Look, the reason I'm even talking about this is because of Somnium, the Rise of Laputa by Zafti Games. Insomnium Rise of Laputa, players are racing to be the first to acquire 20 influence. Each player is given three cards and on their turn will play one. If they play a character card in front of them, it stays there. They earn the influence listed on the card. Some cards will gain a player influence each time their turn comes up. If a player loses one of the cards in front of them due to another card effect, they also lose the amount of influence listed on that card from their supply. If an event card is played, they follow the instructions, then discard it. Once a player has completed their turn, they draw back up to three cards. Play continues until one player has earned their 20th influence point, or when a separate win condition listed on a card in play is met. Before we get into the pros and cons, I want to emphasize that Somnium is right in that sweet spot of a card game that is take that, it's nasty, it's mean, it's rude, um, but it doesn't overstay its welcome. It's got that brevity going for it. A game like this takes 15, max 20 minutes to play, but you still get that flavor. Now, the problem is that that flavor is not for everyone, so we'll get right into the cons and the pros. Consistently, and, and the thing that I'm currently, you know, like at this moment, having the hardest time with is the convoluted name. Somnium Rise of the Lapida. One, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, and two, I for the life of me cannot remember it. I have referenced my notes multiple times in the short amount of time that it's taken to shoot this, and I've owned the game for months and have still been unable to remember it. So, Somnium. Anyway, it's a minor quibble. Uh, going back to that flavor argument that I was talking about, that take that flavor where you are very much uh, interacting with the other players like directly. There's no... You don't have to worry about any sort of uh, multiplayer solitaire going on in this game because it is direct interaction with other players. You uh, say, hey, this is what I've got, and everybody else says, no, no, give me that. And you, you go, like, right, it's a race to 20 points or there's separate win conditions on, in the game. And because of that interaction, it's prone to sort of a back and forth tug of war, which initially, in my mind, thinking, you know, going into this and understanding how the game is played, I thought was going to be a much bigger issue because I thought this, this game's never going to end. People are going to put cards out, people knock them back down, just back and forth. The game's never going to end. So I expected it to end up being a long-winded game like something like Munchkin, uh, but that wasn't the case. And it was, um, you do get some of that push back and forth, that tug of war, but it's not as big an issue as I had initially thought. The game's presentation is pretty great, especially for a $15 game. The box, the cards, the tokens, uh, at least in the retail version, is great. Like everything works as it should and looks nice and feels nice doing it. The art in particular is very thematic and it's it's a nice change of pace from some of the other things. I mean, there are people that will specifically say, oh, I don't like the anime art. If that's you, then maybe look elsewhere. But it works well with this game despite the somewhat generic theme, but even with the generic theme of like trying to take over power, you still have that cool, whimsical, almost uh, castle in the sky feel to it. And while my concerns with it being a take that game and the tug of war, the back and forth, the game itself is actually has a very svelte feel to it, a nice playtime, a nice everything about it. Like you sit down, you can play it, you can explain it in a matter of 60 seconds uh, and bust out a game. Honestly, it's the type of feel that you should get from a game like Munchkin. If you're going to play a game, uh, you know, be it Munchkin, be it, um, what's that other really popular one that I got all into for a while? Smash Up, uh, be it Smash Up, you know, where you're, you're directly interacting with people. For me, that flavor is soured the longer it goes. And so for a 15 minute game, this is perfect. I can get that flavor. Not only can I get that flavor, but I can explain how to play that game very, very quickly. So the, the gameplay, the mechanics, everything, it's very svelte. It's something that I enjoy quite a bit. And lastly, it's inexpensive. Um, Zafti Games does a fantastic job of pricing their games to levels that um, you don't really see or expect from a smaller company. Look, Somnium is a presumptuous little game that expects you to be completely involved in the lore of the game. It's a cool lore. The idea of like a continent floating in the sky and powers fighting over it. I mean, it's something that 
that power struggle has been going on forever since the dawn of time, right? Like, so it's no surprise that we see games with this sort of theme. And this one has that added fantasy flavor, that, that uh, anime style art, and it's got all that. It's presumptuous in that it, it feels like it, it's expecting everybody to care about it. Not everyone's gonna care about that. But it also could have gone the other way and gone a very, become a very abstract game with just numbers and cards and a little bit of text on it. I'm glad it didn't. I'm glad that we've got something that's nice to look at, uh, inexpensive, fun, easy to explain, and has that, that fight, that headbutt. Um, and while I'm not gonna wanna play it every single day, every single time, the fact that it is such a light game to teach but offers that direct interaction, that direct fight is something that's pretty cool. Yes, so Somnium, Rise of Laputa. It's a long-winded game that's pretty short and pretty sweet, and one that I recommend you check out.